This Talking Flutes podcast is kindly sponsored by Trevor James Flutes, making life sound beautiful. You can show them some flute love by following them on Instagram at TJ Flutes, Trevor James Flutes on Facebook, and at trevorjamesflutes.com. Hello and welcome this week to Talking Flutes Extra with me, Jean-Paul Wright. I'd like to start by saying thank you for all your comments and emails which Claire and I do really appreciate receiving. One in particular caught my eye this week from a Julie Parr in New York who wrote, Dear Talking Flutes, I'm really enjoying listening each week. However, as you have recorded so many... I'm getting a little lost in finding some of the older ones and wondered if you can repost some of the popular ones that you have done a while ago so I don't have to listen to all 150. (laughs) Well, now you make a point out of that, Julie. 158 and still going podcasts is a lot for any podcast listener. I do agree. So you make a valid point about looking through our archive and reworking some of the popular older pods and to reintroduce them. And I've spoken to Claire and we're definitely going to do this. But your email did get me thinking and I'm now minded to put all the current pods onto its own dedicated Talking Flutes website where you'll not only be able to listen to every pod at your own pace and whenever you want to do, but to have the benefit of also finding the podcast by category For example, by players such as Sir James Galway, Jasmine Joy, Paul Edmund Davis, Gareth Davis, etc. Through to by topics such as well-being and flute playing tips, etc. Julie did finish by asking how many podcasts are we going to record? Well, Julie, if we can get to the round figure of 200, which will probably take us to the end of this year, which is 2021 then perhaps that's the time to pause and take stock as having a resource of around 200 hours of flute podcasts, we would certainly not want to outstay our welcome on the airwaves. So this week, the podcast has come about really after a Zoom call I had with a London-based multi-instrumentalist and composer Theo Travis during lockdown. From our conversation, and after Theo sent me a track, to add to the happyflutist.com website, I went on to commission him to do some more beautiful alto flute tracks. So what I've done here today is to cobble together some of our Zoom chat with the beautiful pieces that he has written. So let's get cracking. This week's podcast is titled Rhythm of the Breath. As a composer, classical, contemporary and jazz musician, Theo Travis is also a member of the world-famous and one of the greatest UK avant-jazz rock bands of all time, Soft Machine. So, we cut into the conversation when I mentioned that I'm hearing more prog rock on radio nowadays. I mean, it's been around for a good few years. I think the turning point was when Van de Graaff Generator got a good review in The Sun. (laughs) (laughs) I remember remember seeing it thinking... Things are changing. (laughs) And all the box sets started appearing, like the King Crimson, you know, first box set of, you know, and then all of a sudden, and then, uh, you know, the record companies obviously realised that the last bastion of physical product was getting the, you know, the baby boomers rebuying their Genesis and Crimson stuff, you know, remastered and with extra this and that, with a lovely package, and people would fork out a lot of money for a good version of the album they've already bought three times because they don't want the new stuff and they don't want to buy digital. And um, So there is, you know, there's definitely interest and you know, enthusiasm and the soft machine has been, you know, viable because we, we go out so economically. It's just the four of us. And, uh, you know, we use the house sound guy and the house lights guy. And really? sometimes the tour manager, we've got a kind of friend of the band who comes and does it. So, you know, so it kind of works. You know, we basically go out like a jazz band, but play, you know, sort of small rock venues and crossover stuff. It's good. We've been waiting to do a new studio album. In fact, we had a new, the, the live in LA album came out last March, just as things were 
closing down, which was which meant we got you know a period of time selling that, and then we reissued it on C or we issued it on CD for the first time on a different label in July, and so we had some you know carpet sales from that. Um, I've written most of the next album here. <laughs> <laughs> the others don't know yet, but, um, but we need to you know we can't even get together to rehearse and stuff. But you know we're very much looking forward to that coming out again because we. To 2018 and 20 middle of 2019, you know, we had a it was great. We had a studio album, we did a world tour, you know, it worked, it was it received well, it was fun to do, it was profitable, we got to a lot of places. So, you know, and then because the band's 50 years old, I had lots of different, you know, periods and eras, but people people can usually relate to some of it. And yeah. you know, the band gets across well to most people, to be honest. So looking forward to that to happen. That's that's one thing I'm keen to do. I just think it's a good time to have the tour, but November. I mean, most of Europe would have had the vaccine by then, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think so. And we're supposed to go to South America in December, which, well, we'll see. I mean, it's like all these things. You'll, you know, you make plans and then you have to see. But we've got an enthusiastic manager, Giza, who sorting stuff at the moment. Theo and I then went on to discuss a piece of music that he sent to me entitled Misty Lake Clear Mind. When Theo sent it, he said, please feel free to upload it to the happyflutist.com website for you lovely people to listen to and to meditate to. And of course I did that, but on hearing it, I fell in love completely with the way he had composed and recorded it. So before we get into a discussion on the tracks and also subsequently me commissioning him to do more, let's have a quick listen. To Misty Lake Clear Mind. And what I try and get people to do is in mindfulness listening is to go between the lines. In other words, to choose a line and focus on that line to the, because when we listen to music, we listen to it in the whole. Yeah. In the round. So I was trying to get people just to listen to a certain line and then move up and down a line and then focus on that. And then when they do focus on the whole, you get a much richer experience. And I remember it was Andy Scott was telling me that that was a thing that Coltrane did before he actually, when he went into the studio, before he recorded his line, he would listen to the separate tracks 
to yeah. get an overview of the building blocks. It really? just ticked all the boxes. And I think if I'm totally honest, and I was speaking to Melissa Keeling, that what you did and what she did was the original brief. It's stunning. And I want, I want to do a guided meditation over it, but I don't. So I just think you spoil the textures you have inside because then the focus is on the voice. Well, yeah. The textual journey you take it on. The yeah. flute the flute thing, I played it twice and that was it, very quick. Um, Good grief. Um, I, I, but the, because one of the things I've been getting into is, is wave, literally wave synthesis and, and on Ableton. Yeah. You can do this ridiculous stuff. You make, you know, you don't just get like a sine wave or a triangle wave or a saw wave. You get them and then you you kind of sculpt them and then you can work out how you want them to combine in a multiple thing. And then you work out how you want it to come in and out. And then there's something called a wave table, which is basically it's kind of like a shape of waves that you impose. So it's all, it's kind of going under the bonnet of, of a sing, of, of sound, of, of, of sound production, if you like. And then on, on the, on the flute one. So, the, so the important thing, not the important, one of the important things is, so you create this sound, which is built of layers of wave synthesis, but then what makes it interesting is two types of movement. One is the harmonic movement, so it's not just a straight drone. I'm basically going rough, I think, uh, would keys it in, I can't, we'll say it's in D minor. You know, I go roughly from D minor to G minor to kind of E half to minute. So there's a, there's a little bit of harmonic movement, but where the, where the meat and potatoes is, is it's, in the mod, it's in the modulation within the sound. So no, it's nothing still, it's not just like a sine wave. It's constantly doing that slowly, and that and that makes it interesting. Basically, it, it's not just like you know a slab of nylon, if that's to, you know like synths can be often, but one it's sculpted. Two, there's this kind of constant subtle movement within the sound and within the harmony, and then obviously there's layers of you know reverbs and delays to make it a bit more lush as well. It's a, it's a, it's a, I find it an interesting area because I like, I'm interested in sort of the ambient thing and there's a whole load of horrible synths and there's a whole load of people that press a button that says, yeah. you know, lovely and, and, and they just hold it and that's not very interesting either. So to kind of try and get into that. And then obviously, I mean, to me, the alto flute, it's almost like cheating because it's so yeah. lovely anyway. <laughs> So I wanted to do an alto flute one, it's obviously the TJ one, and you know, obviously there's quite a lot of reverb and stuff on it. And then combining it with the sort of modulating, moving back, and then putting the, and then how to balance it, because it's not flute way up front, it's kind of semi up front. The idea is that they're there together, basically. I mean, the flute, because it's a single line, obviously the ear is drawn to it, and because it's, you know, it is an acoustic, beautiful instrument, it's going to stand out however far back you put it. Um, but then it's that trying to balance. So, I mean, I would con when I was mixing it, I'd be bringing the flute down and down yeah. rather than up and up because you do that and it makes the, the, the sort of lush world in which it sits bigger. So these were the kind of things I was thinking. But, um, but with headphones on, I mean, it's just, it, it takes you to a different place. It's like a sandwich, isn't it? You have this gorgeous but yet vulnerable line in the middle. Yeah, it's neatly encompassed, but it, as you say, it's something you, you do something with those waves that just sort of enable relaxation. It's like this, I think it's the slow, it's the slow modulation, partly harmonic. So there's very simple, sort of or not almost chord sequences, just enough to keep it moving, getting it forward. And then, as I say, so on one, there's the forward movement of the harmonic sequence, and then on the other, sort of within a single one. It's just kind of, it's like a cloud. It just kind of turns um, within itself. And that, again, nothing happens fast, but it's just a bit of interest going on. So um, it's kind of a bit, I guess, a sort of 3D is the, is the kind of one. A simple yeah. sound, but 3D and lush and moving is kind of I mean, the it thought process. It offers a vulnerability as well, because depending on how you're meditating and what's your focus, it's, 
if you want, if you've got a vulnerability there, you can explore it because that flute sound is so pure. Yeah. And you're not, ex you're not expecting it to take you anywhere. It's just there. You know, so you're not focusing on it, which is the joy. But if, yeah. you're, if you're just there wanting to relax, it, it enables you to relax. And I just think it just ticked everything. It was just wonderful. Well, I mean, one thing about being, talk about lockdown, one thing about being at home is with a kind of studio setup is, you know, once, you, once you've done your thing, the things you have to do or whatever, you're kind of left with this huge range of possibilities. What shall I do? <laughs> What shall I do? Shall I try and write more of the soft machine album? It's not going to happen for ages. Shall I do another YouTube track? Maybe a meditation track? Shall I, you know, working on production music stuff? Shall I do some practice? And, and because none of them are in a way, or not many of them are, you know, urgent, unless it's like a session for recording for someone, there is a kind of, you know, a sort of self-discipline question as to how you manage your time when it's not clear what you need to do. So I thought I should just do a meditation. It's such a gorgeous sound. I can work on my wavetables and synths and whatever. And it wouldn't it be, and there are a few hour tracks up there. So I thought, you know, it's a bit of a challenge. I'll do an hour. So I did it. So it was kind of a challenge. Then once I'd done that, it was like, okay, well, it'd probably make more sense to have more than one. Med I mean, mostly it's sort of me and Soft Machine and gig stuff. But if I've got one meditation, it'd make sense to do another one. I've done an hour, so... It would make sense to do 10 minutes because I personally quite like a 10 minute slot. And then it's like, well, I've done to do it. What, what's next? Obviously, we also flipped, <laughs> obviously. So that kind of led to it. But at the same time, you know, doing the meditation thing, one, I think it's got value. Two, I enjoy it. Three, in terms of the instrument, the flute, particularly the alto flute or to do is good. And, and four, making ambient sounds or pads or wavetables or whatever that are actually a little bit deeper than normal. I think it's just... It's all kind of, you know, connected to what I like and what I do. So, yeah, I'm trying to make sense of lockdown. And as Theo has managed to successfully navigate through what has been a long 12 months of on and off lockdowns here in London and the UK, let's take a listen to one of his other ambient music compositions called Rhythm of the Breath. And then we'll cut back into our Zoom dialogue and talk about how meditation has changed him.
good. I mean, I can, you know, I've, I have felt the benefits. Uh, my wife has felt the benefits of me doing it, she said. <laughs> yeah, but there isn't the right, if you do five minutes, five minutes yeah. meditation is as good as an hour. It's just typically of me, I just go to the extremes. Um, yeah. And would like to do meditation retreats and things. But any meditation, whether it be one, maybe a micro meditation of two minutes or three minutes, yeah. And that 10 minute, the 10 minute recording that you've done is just, just, it allows anyone to go anywhere they want. And you've yeah. kind of dictated by the music. And that is, that is unusual on a meditation. Yeah. Because then sometimes the music dictates and the line sort of takes you somewhere. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I would do an album, but I, as I said, I don't quite yeah. see how to do it. But, you know, just sticking the thing up on my YouTube channel and sending it to you. Yeah, it just for me, it is. And it, it, I think the stats show when I look at um, SoundCloud that already it is an ex, it's, it's popular. Well, that's good. I mean, that's I good. I mean, I, 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 don't want to, I don't want to adulterate it by doing a voiceover over the top. You could, I mean, unless you did two ver. I mean, you could do. Could you do two versions? Yeah, I can. Like you get the director's cut where the director talks over the whole film, and then you get the, the proper film proper. <laughs> yeah, I could. Do, I could do one. I, what do you call it? You just call it, I don't know, narrated version, bracket, you know, literally. So people, if they don't want it, they just go straight to the music. Yeah. And if they actually like it with a bit of guidance, then there's an option. I mean, I'm totally fine if you wanted to try it or, or not, whatever you, whatever yeah, you want. I'll try it. It's just get, it's getting the right words to go over the top. And yeah. The one, the, the words that you are, that the music encourages you. So it's like it's joint, joint journey. So yeah, I'll, I'll have a look. Well, as I say, you wouldn't you wouldn't ruin the one without the voice anyway. <laughs> That's just an option. No, no. But maybe I'll I'll do another one. So yeah, because I my natural thing is always to do them in a minor key. But so there's on one hand you think well that's what I would naturally do, and then you don't want it to be too sad. But on the other hand, you want it to be reflective and introspective. Yeah, I think a major key it sort of takes you on a different type of journey because you can feel uh, the major key, can't you? Yeah, even I mean, in the past, I've done on Swola. I, I did things in major keys, like in F, for example. And within three minutes, I've turned it into the relative minor. So I'm playing in F. I just stick the D, in, and all of a sudden, you're in D minor. So, but maybe that's okay. I mean, a nice thing to do is do it the other way around, which I did on one one of the Robert Fripp tracks, which is it starts quite dark and a little bit uh, dense, if not claustrophobic, and then. You, you had a kind of major thing clashing with it, so it got even more dense. And then just gradually, you just remove the dark stuff and you're just left with this kind of sunshine. It was kind of a, it was an interesting track. Dark, it's called uh, Dark Clouds, I think. Yeah, it's just interesting to see what works for people. You know, there's no shortage of finding material, but sometimes there's a load of material and it just seems endless and you think well do people does it work for people does it work for people what an interesting question and it is purely one's preference in fact meditation and mindfulness are personal preferences and it may be just because i sing the praises and know the benefits and appreciate the benefits that it has brought to my life i also understand that to some Meditation really is not their bag. But for those of you who enjoy the process of meditation, mindfulness, or just creative visualization by closing your eyes and just being or imagining, we're going to end the podcast this week with a full track from Theo called Floating on Air. And this is one of the pieces I mentioned earlier that I commissioned from Theo for my completely free to access the happyflutist.com website. So before we spend the next 15 minutes indulging ourselves in some beautifully played alto flute and ambient music, I'd just like to say a very big thanks to you all for listening. Claire returns next week to Talking Flutes. So until then, wishing you a wonderful musical week ahead and may your low C be particularly in tune. Now let's indulge ourselves in Floating on Air by Theo Travis. Goodbye.
Talking Flutes and Talking Flutes Extra are podcast productions by the Trevor James Flute Company. For more information, visit trevorjamesflutes.com.